The Logan Hoffman, one of the stars for the new series on TV, and starring in a uh, recently released uh, film, America, and uh, Lime Life, uh, actually just premiered tonight in New York. Uh, thanks so much for taking the time to do this interview. Uh, well, I really appreciate it, and it's always good to uh, help out. And, uh, anybody who's willing to listen to me, I, hell, I'll just <laughs> let them listen, you know? You must be uh, obviously very excited about this uh, new project. Uh, how did it all come about that uh, you were involved with this uh, new series? So, you know, it's, it's just like anybody else in acting. It's, it's, you know, you can be very talented, but it's also luck and who you know. And I, and I fully agree with that. You've been getting uh, a lot of great reviews, including uh, the main star for America, Rosie O'Donnell. First, going back to the whole learning process of being involved with with all those people uh, in the film, uh, of course we mentioned Rosie O'Donnell and other cast members, what did you go away with with that experience from the script, living living the script, uh, and uh, bringing your character to life, and then uh, dealing with people on the set and behind the scenes? Well, I think I think what I got most out of it, and, you know, I'm from Indiana, and it's part of the Midwest, and uh, Michigan is really a uh, it's a heartbreaking place. It's uh, a lot of hard-working people and a lot of kids who uh, aren't getting their second chances in life. And uh, I think this movie's all about trying to give kids a second chance. I mean, I got a cousin out in the correctional facility in Ohio. And uh, uh, by me doing this, it kind of made him feel good about himself. And I, I just feel like these kids who are in these foster care systems and and in these uh, horrible situations with their parents who really don't want them anymore, they just let the state take care of them. It's it's a heartbreaking scenario, and and we really need to. I mean, I, I think it's it's just a shame that so many people. Why are people adopting out of this country when there's so many kids here who need help? And I, I think that's what the great thing about the movie America was. It's a, I, I just think that this it needs to be shown that there are kids here who need help. Sure, America's a great country. We've got everything. But in some ways, I mean, Michigan and, and other parts of the country can be very third world. And we need to stop. It's just a shame that we, we spend so much time taking... Um, I mean, I, I feel, you know, I think you should help out anybody around the world, but I think it's a good idea to uh, help anybody here, too. I mean, there's a lot of kids who need help in uh, the United States and you know, all other parts of North America, but it's still an impoverished situation. Reading over the stats for foster care, uh, children coming out of foster care in the States, it's unbelievable, like 80% uh, of children coming out of foster care at, after uh, 18 years of age end up in crime or, or homelessness. Yeah, most likely death. I mean, there's so many, uh, you know, it's it's a really hard situation for anybody, and I just, I don't know, it just feels like, you know, a lot of people are adopting kids, and I, I'm, believe me, all adoption's great, but, I mean, I think what America needs to show people is that we need to look at these kids here, because there's great kids here, you know, these, and I know, here's another thing, if anyone's ever thinking about adoption, you know, don't go for the little puppy, baby, go for the kid who really needs it. Because there's always going to, anybody who's strong and who's willing to take it off, go for the, the 14, 15, now 16, 17, 18 year old kid who really just needs some guidance. And if you've got a good home and you're willing to help somebody, go with them. Because these kids end up self-mutilating themselves, a total misdirection on what, what life is about. They're in a constant state of pain, and they just need help. And I think Rosie's done a great job in, in showing that how much people need help. And same with Eve, the director. I mean, they, he was able to capture the, the sorrow and pain and how confused these kids are. You know, we all have a life path, and these, these kids just need a little bit of direction so they don't stumble. And sadly, when they stumble, it's usually a really bad situation. They end up in jail or sometimes death and then maybe homelessness. I mean, it's just it's tough stuff. And, and it's just like, you know, we come from a good country and we should, 
really awesome. Look at the, I'm not look, I'm not talking down. If you want to adopt a kid from a different country, that's okay. But I just think there's a lot of good kids here. You know? Yeah, that's an issue that uh, definitely has to be brought up and, uh, and addressed, obviously, a lot more. Uh, you play a uh, uh, young man, a uh, young teen, uh, Marshall, who uh, was released into foster care. His his mother was a, a, a crack addict, and he was was abused. But that was actually the story of the main character, America. Oh, okay. uh, I'm just kind of the bad guy. I mean, they really don't dive into Marshall's um, life, but Marshall was really just... Um, He's one of those kids who's just, you know, he says, oh, look, a kitten, let's step on it. You know, he was a very, so much pain was in him that, that it just, it was to that point, you know, all the feelings are polar opposite. And so much pain was in Marshall that, you know, that made him laugh. That made him, he was really, I actually, the inspiration for the entire character was Charles Manson. I was listening to him ramble like he always does if you ever watch anything on YouTube of him. And he was saying, if you're nice to me, man, I'm the man in the mirror. If you're nice to me, I'll be nice to you. If you pat me on the back, I'll pat you on the back. If you punch me, I'll punch you. If you stab me, I'll stab you. And that was really Marshall. He was just very visceral, you know. Marshall, he was very, you know, man in the mirror. He would... You know, if you hit him, he'd hit you. If you smiled at him and said, how are you doing? He'd say, how are you doing? But, uh, you know, if you cut him, he'll cut you. You know, he's very, I'll do what you do to me. But I think, I mean, that character in America, he was really, you know, he wanted to play. That was his whole thing. If America was this new fresh meat, and let's see if I can break him. Because, I mean, the be it's a good thing when you get to play a really fucked up guy. It's, it's, some, it's, because in real life, we really can't do the stuff we got to do on film. Because you can really go the full extent and not have to have any repercussions. And I can pray to the good Lord above, please forgive me for whatever I've done. Uh, that was just acting today, you know? And you don't really feel that bad in your heart, you know? But uh, it's good to play messed up characters because it, it lets the actor do things that they usually don't get to do in real life. And uh, going over just the, the little things that... Uh, the physicality, like obviously your your hair is a little different uh, in the film, and and then facial expressions for your character, uh, who, who's obviously been traumatized, you know, in his life being in foster care, was it something you had to that you had to kind of work on the the, the physical part, the the facial expressions. I it, it kind of came naturally at times, and other times you just had to remind yourself, well, this is when it comes to like. Uh, um you're just supposed to exist in the situation, and I kind of come from a family who's, you know, if we want to fight, you got to put the eyes of God in you. So, you know, the facial expressions and stuff really isn't uh, that difficult because, you know, I mean, I think the key to any acting, you, you kind of got to look at the eyes. Because if you can get those eyes, you ever fight a guy, so when you look inside his eyes, and it's like the eyes of God are right behind him. And you're like, I'm going to lose this fight because God's not on my side. And I think, I think, I think, I mean, Marshall, he wasn't like that. It was like the eyes of Satan were on his eyes. And were you going to win the fight? In America, the opposite part, you look through his eyes. Uh, Philip Johnson was a great actor. I really hope to see a lot of him in the future. Uh, it was like the eyes of God, the eyes of innocence. And I was the eyes of everything that was wrong. I, I, I'm, I'm, the, I'm what the system has done. We're both products of this awful and broken system known as the foster care system. And Philip was able to show that there's a little bit of angel left. But my job, as my part, was to show I'm torn apart. And I'm not functioning. And I need help. And frankly, it's too past gone. I'm not going to get any help. So I'm the guy who's going to get out and kill somebody. And Philip's the guy who's going to get a, get a, uh, a degree, you know, move on with his life, become a productive member of society. Because really what we're doing with putting these kids in these foster care systems are just creating the majority of unfunctional people. You know? And, and my character is the representative 
of the unfunctional part. But Philip, very unfunctional, couldn't make it, I mean, the part of America, couldn't make it. But then Rosie comes in, and she lets him see that it is possible, that it is possible that he can make it in society, and be a successful member. I mean, society is all we need. A lot of people uh, have been uh, talking about your performance, your acting is, well first, it's very genuine, it's something authentic, it's something new and refreshing, it, almost like people have been waiting for this for a long time, people talk about uh, James Dean, and some people have actually compared you a little bit to James Dean, by the way, uh, James Dean is, is from Indiana, you probably don't feel too comfortable being compared to, to the actors, you have your own identity. Uh, just to delve into to your background, when did you first start acting and what context did you train to be an actor? Well, I uh, first started it out, uh, I just I just knew monologues because I loved techie work in high school. Like I loved doing the set design and stuff, but in order to be a part of set design you had to take an acting class. So I went to a uh, next door neighbor's Christmas party and uh, one of their sons taught voice and movement at uh, Iowa State University. His name is Scott Nice. He's a fabulous voice and movement teacher. One of the most informed people on, uh, on Catherine Sportage Morris technique but he, he can pull out beautifully. But uh, his name is Scott Nice and uh, he really gave me my first chance because he, he watched me do a monologue in a back room and then he gave me direction. And he told me that he noticed that I could take direction. So then he said, I want you to go to a teacher I know. And her name is Catherine Gateway. He's a Meisner teacher who's really one of the last, like, true Meisner teachers. And I don't care what anybody says. She is really the most purest form you can really get to, to this day. And Catherine, I lived with her for about a year and a half acting on and off uh, and just learning the Meisner technique and then she introduced me to someone um, in New York who sadly died of uh, cancer and a uh, good man and he, he helped me get involved with some other management agencies before he passed and uh, I'm with Gersh and TMT now and uh, I've just been trying to go out doing the whole actor thing in New York you know just working as hard as I can but it feels really good. And it's a really, it's a great thing to know that, you know, a kid from Indiana who uh, really probably wasn't going to go to college and probably wasn't going to live a life at a, some sort of mill, was able to do something as nice and as, as, uh, as fulfilling as what I'm doing right now. You know, I, I didn't learn to read until the seventh grade. You know, I had dyslexia and no, <laughs> for a long time there, I thought I was going to be uh, flipping burgers for a living. But then this approached me, and it's the only thing I've ever been good at. And I love it very much. Logan, you've been here, uh, had a chance to spend some time in Canada. I was wondering if you could comment on the vibe you picked up uh, over here in the film industry in Vancouver, because people say it's it's kind of more a little bit more character based here. What kind of difference do you notice in the film community here? It's only been a short time though for you over here, but I was wondering if you can comment on that. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's a great city and, and you guys have got a lot of guts. I mean, it's just like Indiana. I mean, people from Indiana is just like, we just want a little bit of recognition. You know what I mean? I mean, if you're from Texas, how everybody knows about Texas. But, you know, Vancouver's up against places like LA and New York and you guys really got the heart. So as long as you guys got the heart, we're just going to keep on trucking here. Listeners, we were just talking to Logan Hoffman, one of the stars for recently released film America and Limelight, uh, just released tonight, uh, premiered tonight in New York, and uh, upcoming projects for a new series on TV. Is there a link or a website that those just can go to if they like more information on your, your current projects, upcoming projects? Uh, well, I guess IMDB is about the only option you got. I don't know. I, don't, I think I have a fan site somewhere out there, but I'm not so sure where it is. 
it's been great getting this opportunity to talk to you, and I'm sure a lot of people have been talking tonight. Uh, your trailer screened at the Salute Social Club uh, and around uh, you know, the film community. People are looking forward to, to see more of your work. Yeah, your style is very unique. It's something 